Okay, so by the title of this video, you should already know what I'm doing today, but I'm still going to provide a little backstory. So about three months after I got, well, after about three months after I got this car, the alternator went bad and <clears throat> I didn't have a ton of money because it, it happened unexpectedly. So I went to AutoZone and got like the, uh, like pretty much the cheapest option they had, which was like a manufactured alternator. And I put that on and boy, was it a pain, but I got it on and I noticed that it was like making this whining noise. Like first day I had it on, but I ignored it. I mean, I had never done that before and I didn't technically know how an alternator was supposed to sound. So I kept driving it for months and months without any issue. But a few days ago, I started smelling this burning smell in my car, and I couldn't figure out what it was. And I, I ignored it because I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. Uh, but yesterday, I was driving, and my lights and everything started getting dim, like in my interior and stuff. So I was like, I'd rather be safe than sorry, and just go get like the, uh, the battery checked out at like a local auto parts store. So I went and got it checked out, and it turns out that my battery was like halfway dead. And then I went to look under my hood. Someone's walking by. I went to look under my hood and I was seeing smoke coming from the alternator. So I'm a, I've never had any problems with my battery before. I got it tested a few months back when the original alternator went bad and they said that it was in good condition. So I'm assuming that's still the case, but uh, I think my alternator is toast. So I'm going to film taking that off today or try my best to. Because I'm I'm not in the place I normally work on my cars at or my car at. And uh people are pretty nosy around here, they like to stare and shit. But uh I do the best I can. So yeah. Guess we can get started on that then. Alright, so we're in the engine bay. And the first thing you need to do is remove that oh hold on. You need to remove that bolt right there. As you can see, mine is pretty rounded because I had a tough time getting it off the first time. But um, I think I might still be able to get it off. So we'll see. Okay, so I got that bolt off and now you see, it just kind of holds it in place. So the belt has tension on it. As you can see now, it just moves freely. Now I think I'm pretty sure, I, I haven't looked at the, um, like the tutorial on how to replace it but i'm pretty sure next i have to go under the car and release or um remove a bracket that kind of holds that alternator in and to get to it you have to remove the uh front driver's side tire and wheel so that's what we do next another thing you want to make sure you do is down there there's that green plug uh hold on let me focus a little better there's that green plug that plugs into the alternator, and then there's this main power wire right here. Uh, as long as the battery is disconnected, it shouldn't be anything running through it, so it should be safe to touch to remove. But uh, make sure you disconnect the uh, negative terminal on the battery so there's no power going to it. And then make sure you remove these two. That one just clips out. This one has a 10 millimeter bolt on top that holds it, that holds it down. All right. So we're under the car now. And uh, if you look down here, right up there, there's a bolt that is supposed to go through here and kind of hold the bottom of the alternator in place right there. But uh, it would seem mine has backed out and I have no idea where it went. So until I get something to put in there, actually you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, that bolt is gone. So that makes this replacement a little bit easier, but I don't know what I'm gonna do about that yet. And then, so once you remove that bolt, I think it was a 14, it was, it, it was either a 12 or a 14 millimeter. But once you get that removed, there's this bolt down here and you have to use, you have to remove that to get this bracket off and with the, without removing, you have to remove this bracket 
just to get this alternator out because it's a very tight space. It's a very tight squeeze to get it out. So after I remove that and remove this belt on it, it should I should be able to just wiggle it out. So we'll see if I haven't forgotten anything else. All right, so there was another bolt for that bracket on the other side, but I couldn't show it from under the car. So I'll just show you right here. It's, I'm trying my best to show it to you, but it's like right there. I think that's also a 14 mil. And then once I get that off, you can completely remove the bracket. And then I should be able to wiggle the alternator out from the bottom of the car. All right, so. I got everything disconnected now. And uh, I got all the, the power wires. I got the bracket off at the bottom down there. And now I'm in the process of trying to maneuver this, uh, this alternator out. I got the wheel off. Well, actually, now looking at it, that, that's, actually that's... Wow. That was way harder the first time I did it. The first time I did that, I was out here maybe an hour just wrestling with the different ways to get that out of there. But lucky for me, it just slid right out. Cool, all right then. All right, so the auto parts store ended up not having the part I needed at the time I needed it. They ended up not getting it until like six or seven at night. And so, now I'm pretty much forced to change this in the middle of the night because I have to, well, I don't have to drive this to work tomorrow, but I'd like to drive this to work tomorrow. So I apologize in advance if the footage is a little blurry, but it's the best I can do. So yeah, here we go. Okay. All right. So this is the alternator bracket that holds it up from the bottom. Uh, I went on ahead and ordered that missing bolt from uh, an OEM Honda website. I'll, I'll link it down below when I get this all finished up and edited. So you can find the website for other parts you might need. But that should be here later this week and I'll put that on after the fact. But I just need to get everything bolted back in. So right there is where this bracket has to go in. And it's two 14 mils holding it in. And then all I gotta do is put the alternator in back up top, line everything up and uh, retighten the belt and stuff and then I should be done after I reconnect the power and whatnot okay so right down there you can see that's the part of the bracket and that's the last bolt I have to put in and then there's that other one that was right there from earlier so just screw those back in and then we'll get on to the next step okay so scratch that so prior to putting the alternator back in you're you're supposed to slide it in through the wheel well prior to putting that alternator bracket back on at the bottom down there. So I have to take that back off, wiggle the alternator in here, and then put the bracket back on. So I kind of did that backwards. Okay, so a little update I did. I managed to just take one of the screws for the bracket out, and you can't tell, but I managed to take one of the screws from the bracket out and just kind of pivot it up. And so that allowed me enough clearance to get it in there. So now we can move, we can put that bolt back in for the bracket and then move on to hooking the rest of the alternator up. Alternator bolts it all back up. All you have to do is put this main belt right Well, I don't know if that's the main belt, but you put that belt back on the pulley and then that strip bolt I was showing out earlier. I also bought a new one of these. I'm gonna replace that once it comes in later this week. You have to push the alternator back as far as it'll go. I don't know if I'll be able to show you or not, but hold on. No, I can't show you. But like, you can adjust how far back or forward this alternator goes. In order to stop the belt from slipping, you have to push it back as far as you go while tightening that nut right there. So once you do that, you're pretty much done. Now I have to put that this connector back here, I moved it so I could have more room in here earlier. And then the, like, there's that main, that green plug down there from earlier. And then I gotta put the main power back on the top part with that, that was secured with like the 10 millimeter, the, the, the millimeter bolt from earlier. 
and then I hook up the battery and I should be good to go, so. All right, so now we have everything bolted back up. Everything looks to be fine as far as installation goes. And now I'm gonna reconnect the battery. I should probably tighten that at some point. Come on. All right. Let's try and start this thing. Let me just double check, make sure nothing crazy is happening over here. I don't smell anything weird. Okay, let's try and start it. Uh, whew, wish me luck, because I don't want to do that at all. So, also that, that new alternator I just put on isn't making the same bearing noise that my old one did. Like, cause the, like I said earlier, the old one was making lots of noise like as soon as I put it on, the day I put it on, but I kinda ignored it. So hopefully this one actually lasts for me a little longer. But um, all I have to do now is put the wheel back on and I think um, this pretty much wraps up the video. So thanks to everyone for watching and uh, I'll see you guys next time.